Hi, and welcome to another episode of Tom Ray's Art Podcast. I'm Tom. Uh, on today's show, I actually had an interview that got rescheduled, but I didn't really want to skip a week. So I actually got an idea because uh, if you've been listening to the show for a while, you might know that I have a side business that I do. I collect and sell vintage illustrated books and toys and games from the 50s through the 90s. I've been doing that for quite a few years. And uh, when I started doing this, I had an intern for a while. And this intern is also a musician. They, uh, they're they actually getting ready to release an album, a digital and physical album, uh, and release merchandise and shirts and set up a store and other things. So the other day, uh, they messaged me on Facebook and uh, they had some questions about what they were doing because when the intern used to work for me, they knew, I mean, that's what I did. I shipped things and I set up stores and I create websites and all that kind of stuff. Uh, so they had some questions that they wanted to ask me about shipping and online carts for their band and for the stuff that they're going to be selling. And I was, of course, happy to help out with what I knew. When I started doing season, I think it was season three of the podcast, uh, I, I actually started to think about selling my work online, my comics, my, uh, the books that I make, things that I'm doing now. Uh, and I was trying to think of selling the stuff online. The main thing would be I had no idea how to ship things. That was my biggest problem. I knew how to set up a cart. I didn't know a lot about setting up the shipping costs or what to use. That was really the biggest problem that I had. Uh, when I was doing season three of the podcast, when I started uh, setting this up, that was one of the things that I literally asked people about when I was interviewing them. Uh, I, I was asking local makers about, uh, you know, questions about shipping and what they do. And a lot of people, one of the things <laughs> that I really wanted to know, there were a lot of people that shipped delicate, breakable, uh, you know, just items where I'm like, oh, that's got to be so tough. How do you ship that? And know that it's going to arrive okay. That was my biggest fear was not only like I could ship things. I can put stuff in a box and put a label on it. Sure. But how it gets there or what happens or how I should be doing it. And am I doing it right? Am I using the right service? How much does it cost? These were all questions I had when I started out. So I kind of just asked these questions little by little to try and learn uh, from the people that I was talking to on the show. And it's kind of why I started this side business of selling these old items to learn these things. And as I was asking people, I was trying out different methods of shipping and I was learning about packing. I was buying delicate items and like glasses, old glasses. I knew it was still going to be hard to ship them. I knew it would suck if they broke and they did all the time. I learned so many things over the years. Anyway, what I'm getting at is uh, that's why I wanted to share these questions that my old intern asked me when he was trying to set up something for his own uh, you know, business, his band, his, uh, cause he's going to be selling CDs, tapes and shirts and other merchandise items. And they want to set up a store. So I want to go over some of the questions that they asked me about, uh, about doing all this and, uh, just some of the answers I had, because again, when I started out, I didn't really know. And now that I know I, it, when I was doing the show, much like I said before, I'm like going, ah, but everybody knows this. And then I remembered I didn't know, and I didn't know who to ask and I didn't know what to ask. And these questions are so full on, like starting from the beginning, ask questions. And uh, I appreciated it so much because it, it gave me more insight on what it was like when I didn't know this stuff. And I, I really wanted to share this. So the first uh, question was uh, a general question. Do I have any good tips for shipping shirts and CDs and tapes? So I had to clarify when he said this, because I said, are you shipping the shirts with the CDs and the tapes, or are they all separate? Because there are different things he could do, especially with CDs and tapes. But if he makes like bundles or packages out of them, then he can't. So um, he answered, uh, we're planning on opening an online store. So I guess I'm wondering, what would you do for CDs and tapes just on their own, first of all? And so first I gave him some advice about shipping, uh, the way to package them for shipping the CDs and the tapes and some price options for those as well. So, uh, first I told him, and this is something that, uh, 
I still use to this day. Uh, I don't remember the last time I've ever bought a box. So, <laughs> so I told him, I mean, I buy a lot of, uh, like, uh, padded envelopes and things like that, which I tell them too, but I, I, I haven't bought a box in years. So I said, stock up on cardboard and then get padded envelopes, which you can get pretty cheap. If, if you look around it, it, anywhere, there are different places to get padded envelopes. So I said, you can protect the CDs just by wrapping them in the cardboard, just wrap it around to make your own makeshift box. That's the side of the C- size of the CD. And then put that inside the padded envelope and you can do the same thing with the tapes. So it's kind of a double protection. It's you're creating a box that doesn't have to be a perfect box all by itself. You can then take that wrapped around thing that's kind of makeshift together, held together with tape and put it in a padded envelope, which adds some extra layering. When I first started doing shipping, I thought everything had to either be in a box or in a package or a padded envelope. I didn't know that I could do stuff like this. Like if I was going to ship a CD, I thought I had to put it in a CD box. That was the way I did it. Or if I put it in a padded envelope, which I'm like, well, that's going to break. So I won't put it in there. But if I just wrap a strip of cardboard around that CD three times or two times, and then put that in the padded envelope, tape it up, boom, it actually is, it's, it's a good way to ship it. So And of course, like I said, it seems obvious, but when I first started, I was like, oh, I have to put it in a box. That was it. Anyway, so then I told him about media mail for the tapes and CDs. So that's why I was asking, are you going to be shipping it with t-shirts or anything like that? Anything like that? So I said, you can ship the CDs and tapes by themselves or, you know, and, and like multiples of them, like several CDs along with tapes, and they can be shipped as media mail which is only a uh, $3.65 cost for shipping if it's under a pound. And if it goes above a pound, it's only like, I want to say 60 cents more. I know it's in the $4 range, like maybe $4.25. At least right now at the time of recording this, it goes up each year. But that's much cheaper than shipping it by weight. So there's a specific thing for things like that. And I'll get to that in a minute on media. But then the next thing I said to him was that he could do first class for the shirts. So one of the things that I didn't know about uh, shipping when I started was the difference, first of all, between first class shipping, priority shipping, all those kinds of things at the post office. The thing I knew about growing up was I put it in an envelope and if it seems like it weighs a little too much, I put more stamps on it. That's all I knew about shipping. So (laughs) now I know a lot more about shipping first class priority mail. I had no clue, especially even with my band. When I used to occasionally get a CD that was sold, I would go to ship it and I'd go to the post office and I didn't have a box or anything. I'd buy something there and they have these things. It's almost like a trick. They have these things that are meant for shipping CDs or shipping DVDs or shipping like boxes right there, but they're priority. So I'd go to ship it and I'd go to ship a CD and it would be like $9. And I'm like, what? The, the person bought the CD for $8, you know, stuff like that. And I had no idea because I was putting in a priority box. So I could have shipped it cheaper, but since I was putting it in this box, it automatically got bumped up to being priority. Anyway, that's a little side story. I'm getting ahead of myself. So I said he could ship the shirts first class because one of the things I didn't know was the difference uh, that, uh, you know, priority shipping is... Basically, if something's over a pound, then it's going to be priority shipping. If it's under a pound, I can ship it for first class. So I added, you can also use those padded envelopes for the shirts, which would probably be under a pound. So that's just first class shipping. And first class shipping, from what I know, is it has two types of prices for that. If it's under five ounces, that's the cheaper price. And if it goes over five ounces. That's the second level of first class shipping, which is still pretty cheapish. But uh, once it's over a pound, then that's when it has to be shipped priority mail. That I did not know starting out. All right. So (laughs) then he asked, and this is actually a good question. And when he first asked it, I was like, what? But it's like, no, it's, it goes right along with what I was saying about the boxes before. They're little things that sometimes make a difference. He said, do the padded envelopes have to be a specific dimension for shipping at the post office? 
And I said, no, not at all. Uh, the contents matter. That's the only thing. If you're shipping tapes and CDs, you can ship them as media mail. If you add anything else to the package, like say you want to add a t-shirt with a CD, it can no longer be considered media mail, even though it has media in it, but something else is in it. The entire concept of media mail is that sometimes uh, books or records or other sorts of media uh, can be heavy. So uh, they get a cheaper rate by the pound. And the reason for that is it's kind of like a library thing, kind of like for the reason behind libraries and why libraries get different treatment, because it's to relieve, it's to help relieve the friction to access of knowledge and culture. So that's the reason sort of, from my understanding, behind media mail. So if you put t-shirts in there, you're kind of violating that. You're, a t-shirt is not considered that's considered fashion that's considered something where i mean sure it could be a shirt that is culturally significant but not all shirts are media is considered that way it's considered expression reading knowledge all that kind of stuff so that's why he uh that's why i was asking how he was going to be shipping before so if he was just going to be shipping cds different thing anyway and then that's when I also explained uh, under a pound, he can ship first class. So if you, I said to him, if you did bundle like a CD and a shirt together, it would probably still be under a pound. So you'd be able to ship that first class, which is still pretty inexpensive. Now, uh, where to get these shipping labels? Uh, we had been talking about shipping it, but he was thinking he was going to go to the post office and buy it and have them wait for him, which you can do. But then I shared the greatest discovery, and I'm not even really sure how I found out about it, but the greatest discovery for shipping that I have ever found. It's a free service for creating and buying shipping labels. And I told him, you can actually buy shipping labels by setting up a free account at pirateship.com. Now, this isn't even an ad, and it sounds like I'm starting one. It's not. <laughs> I use it all the time. This is the place where I make my labels every day, I told him. And it offers discount prices. So even the prices that I'm telling you about, um, the first class shipping is actually cheaper there. It's discount bulk, bulk prices through this site at pirateship.com. And also I can do shipping cost estimates on there. So I get cheaper label prices and I also get cost estimates. So if somebody goes, hey, I want to order a bunch of stuff, like say, you know, I have an item in my store, but a lot of stores aren't set up to make bundle shipping. Uh, so you do those separate or you create them, you make a custom bundle for people, but then it's like, how much is the shipping going to cost? How much will that add up to? What I can do is I can, uh, take the items that they have, weigh them on a scale that I bought, uh, that also I can get pretty cheap and you will need a scale. I think I told him that, uh, he'll need a scale for shipping these things, but, uh, I can weigh those. And then I just need the person's zip code and in pirate ship, I can enter that zip code and from my address to that zip code and the added weight without buying a label, it will tell me an estimate of what that label will cost and the different services that I can use to find a cheaper cost or the different like uh, UPS, FedEx, USPS, all those things. Yeah. Shipping uh, a pirate ship.com. One of the greatest things I discovered. So I told him about that. I can print the labels for free. I can sign up for free. I can do it right now. It's, it's great. If you, if you haven't, if, if you've been, if you've been paying for labels or a service for labels, go check it out and see what you think. Cause, uh, comparably, uh, uh, comparably or comparably either way, uh, I'd be curious to know if one is better than the other, or if I'm just excited about it for nothing, who knows? So back to my story about the conversation I had with my former intern. Um, I also asked him where you're setting up your store. Cause he said he was planning on selling them in a store. And, uh, he said, big cartel. And, uh, he said, we were kind of looking around for something relatively cheap that seemed, and that one seemed to be the cheapest. And it is, it offers a, sh a cheap option, but also the upgrade is not that much for what you're going to do. And I told him I've used it before myself. Um, and if you're, I, I didn't know if he knew this, cause I think he said he was using the free option. Uh, which the free option is if you're doing under five items, big cartel is free. You can use big cartel to sell up to five items and it does just like any other service where it just takes a percentage of what the sale you're doing is. 
and it's fine. I've used it for, I still use it for a couple of things that I've set up some online stores. Uh, and then he asked me, uh, well, we think we might end up selling more in the future. What would I suggest? And there are a bunch of suggestions, but I know that he's looking for a free option. So the other free option that I knew about is, uh, the one that I'm currently using right now for my pop culture site. Uh, I said, you can create a free account with square. Uh, now that's square, like the card reader app, the thing that you use on your phone to swipe cards, not Squarespace, the website, which that is very confusing. And I find myself getting confused talking about them as well. Uh, square, Squarespace, but this is square, the app, which a lot of us I'm sure probably already have. Uh, I told him that you can actually post as many things as you want there. I've got like 2000 items in my square store, uh, my square online store. And then I said the app itself actually connects with the website. I'm able to add items to the app on my phone and it will connect to my Square website, but only kind of. It gives it basic information. I still have to go to the Square. I have to go in the browser to the Square store that I set up on the website and add more information like, shipping and weight and all that. It's kind of confusing at first, but once you get it, you kind of get it. But they it does sync with the app, just not perfectly. Uh, they are still two different entities. So anyway, I suggested the Square website. So if you go to squareup.com, sign into your account, there's a section at the bottom that uh, says online store. And you can set one up for free and put as much stuff as you want in there. Um, then one of the, I think it's one of the last questions that he asked was, what about the shipping cost in the store? Do you usually add the shipping cost uh, to the, or do you add it to the price? Wait, how did he word this? Sorry, I'm read, I'm trying to read what he wrote and it was through messaging, so it's not always perfect. He asked, do you usually add what the shipping cost is to the price that's displayed or can Square do like plus shipping cost? And I said, it's actually a bit tricky. Again, much like setting up the online store, but it is free. Uh, the Square setup for the free version, uh, you have to go in to the settings and then set up what shipping option prices are manually. And it can add them by weight. I can set them up to go, if something is 0.5, then charge this much. It doesn't connect directly to the shipping service or USPS to get the overall prices. So I can put those prices in manually. It's not perfect. Um, or I told him with what you're doing, you could just do free shipping and add the price of the shipping to the cost of what they're buying. So if they're selling an album for $10 and shipping is 13, you know, $3 65 cents, then just sell the album for $3 or uh, 13 65. So I told him that and, uh, you know, and he was really happy about it. And after that, that's why I wanted to share this. So those are some of the questions that my uh, friend and former intern had as he was setting up to release the new album for his band. And I was glad to help. And that was, uh, that was why I wanted to share this because uh, like me a few years ago, uh, I wasn't sure how to do all this. And now I'm able to share that sort of thing. So that's what I wanted to talk about today. Um, I hope you found this interesting. And uh, also, if you have any tips or suggestions or if there's, you know, things that maybe are even additions to what I had said or a better way uh, about what I, you know, doing what I said, uh, let me know. Uh, just email me at tom at tomrayswebsite.com. So, uh, I'll be back with another podcast next week. So until then, see you next time.